Mono Daisy. I suppose the Pieta 1873 single action was just more than he could bear. Hi, I'm Dustin Weiniger. Lucky for me, I was able to outdraw that carbonated bandit and win the duel. Now let's take a look at the revolver that made it possible. I've heard this revolver called by three names. The Single Action Army, which it is not. That is a Colt firearm, which this is a replica of. I've also heard it called the Cimarron Frontier Old Model. And I've heard it called the Pieta 1873 Single Action Army. Well, here's the story. It was made by Pieta in Italy as the 1873 Single Action Army, imported into the United States to Texas by Cimarron Firearms Company, and so it's marked on the top, Cimarron Firearms Company, but on the bottom of the barrel it is also marked, 1873 Single Action Pieta, Italy. So I'll stick with Pieta 1873 Single Action. This gun was pretty hard for me to find. This is a true 1873 design. Granted, this particular one was just made in the last couple of years. It is a reproduction, but it is the design of 1873. Now, when you go into your local gun shops, you'll see a lot of guns similar to this marked 1873, but they're not quite correct. For example, on this Pieta, you have a round ejector. On most of the ones you'll see in gun shops, that will be a crescent shape, which actually did not come out on this model until I believe 1896. So that would have been the second generation Colt single action army that they're replicating there, not the first generation from 1873. Also, this has a very thin front sight blade. Most will have a wider blade, also from the mid-1890s. This one has a very thin rear sight notch, unlike the later 18, uh, mid-90s. So this is the true design. One other thing that's missing, you may notice there is no spring-loaded cross pin for removing the base pin, and that is because this has the 1873 screw, which needs to be removed. Now granted, all those features from the later model are better, and they are more convenient for when you're using the firearm, but I bought this gun as a piece of history, and so even though it's less convenient to use, especially with a screw instead of a push pin, I like the 1873 model. Now since it is a single action, I do want to demonstrate how it's loaded. To load a single action revolver, the loading gate is opened. Now if you have a Ruger or some of the others with a modernized action, opening that loading gate will free the cylinder to spin, but on a true 1873 design it will not. You'll need to pull the half hammer to half cock, which is two clicks. Now the cylinder is free. Now you'll notice the firing pin is attached to the hammer. On an 1873 design there is no transfer bar, so even though there are six chambers in this cylinder, it is not safe to carry with six because your firing pin would be resting on a primer, making it extremely dangerous to carry the gun in a holster. So the proper loading procedure, and these are not primed and there's no gunpowder, these are just dummies, you will load one chamber, then skip a chamber, and then load one, two, three, four. Close the gate, and now, if you look in this gap, as I pull the hammer back, you'll see that the one I skipped is now at the top, if you can see in that gap. So when I let the hammer down, that firing pin is resting on an empty chamber, which means this can be holstered without the risk of discharging if something were to bump on the hammer. Then, single action means you have to manually pull the hammer before each shot, and you would fire five. To unload, you'll open the gate again, pull the hammer to half cock again. Now, since these are not actual live rounds that have been fired, they would actually just fall right out. But when they've been fired, they will expand and get stuck. So you'll need to pull down on this ejector, which is on a spring, and that will just pop them out one by one. 
There we go. Until the cylinder is completely empty. Now, before I take off, I did manage to take out that carbonated bandit, but I believe I saw a few more members of his high fructose gang. So let's head back out there in the desert and see if we can finish them off. Well, let's load up and take care of that high fructose gang. So I open the loading gate, put the hammer at half cock, make sure it's not loaded already. All six chambers are empty. Now I've got some new cartridges here, as well as some that have been fired once before and reloaded. Today though, we'll stick with the new cartridges. So again, opening the loading gate, two clicks back to half cock, freeing the cylinder. I'll load one, and remember we then skip one chamber. Then I load one, two, three, and four. Now as I close the gate, I pull the hammer to full cock, which rotates the empty chamber under it, so I can lower the hammer on the empty chamber. Now let's get after those carbonated bandits. Let's see how strong it is against AR-500 steel. Well, that should take care of that high fructose gang, at least for now. Now, you may have noticed when I was firing this, there was quite a bit of smoke being produced. The reason for that is because I hand load all of my 45 Colt cartridges with black powder instead of the modern smokeless powder, just to simulate the actual ammunition of 1873. Now, if you pick up one of these, you don't have to use black powder. A lot of people don't like it because of the mess. And this is perfectly capable of safely firing modern smokeless cartridges. Now, if you bought one in 1873, that was a different type of steel back then. It wasn't as strong, and black powder was absolutely necessary. This, even though it replicates 1873, it is made out of new 21st century steel, and you can certainly use the smokeless cartridges if you like. I just like the historical aspect of these guns, so I shoot them historically with black powder. Overall, my impression of this firearm is nothing but great. Again, with the true 1873 features, it's not the most convenient firearm to take care of, but it's a great piece of history. This is an exact copy of Colt's single action army. I've even been told, now I've not tried this, but I've been told that if parts go bad on this, you can replace them with Colt parts. It's made that exact as a reproduction. So if you don't want to spend $1,500 or so on a Colt single action army, you could spend four or $500 on a Pieta 1873 single action. It looks like a Colt, it feels like a Colt, it shoots like a Colt, it even has the distinct four click hammer like a Colt, C-O-L-T. And a lot of people wouldn't even tell the difference. So maybe consider that if you'd like a piece of Wild West history without paying Wild West money. Anyway, I hope this review and video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it, as I always hope. And if you did like it, please don't forget to click that thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel. And I'd appreciate it if you share this video. It helps the channel a lot and helps me bring more videos to you. As always, thanks so much for watching.